A very good afternoon to one and all. I welcome you all on the behalf of Organizing Committee, College of Horticulture and Forestry, Pasi Ghat, on the four, third day of uh, four-day seminar uh, webinar on environment and climate change. We have with us the distinguished speaker, Dr. V.P. Unyal. He is a senior professor and scientist G, and uh, he is a member of Royal Entomological Society, London. Presently, he is the head of landscape level planning and management in Wildlife Institute of India, Chandrabani Dharadun, Uttarakhand. He is he is having a good experience in biodiversity, and that's why he has going to deliver a lecture on bioindicator for monitoring biodiversity and ecosystem health. In his profile, some highlights I'm going to. Uh, show you it's already uh, flashed in the slides as well. He has been awarded with UGC fellowship to work on taxonomical studies. His current projects include taxonomical and ecological studies on arachnids of France and Western Himalayas, assessment and conservation practices of pollinators through community participation in the Indian tree, Himalayan region, climate change perspective, national mission of Himalayan studies, worked as biologist under free GN, GHNP research project on ecological studies in conservation of biodiversity and biotic pressure in the Great Himalayan National Park conservation areas. He has participated in the Nanda Devi ecological expedition as well. In the international experience, he has participated in different international conferences and seminars including countries like Austria, China, Scotland, USA, Italy, Switzerland, Greece, Japan, etc. He guided 22 PhD students and 24 MSc dissertation. He published more than 90 high rated research publication, 12 reports, three popular articles and four books. So now I request our distinguished speaker Dr. V.P. Unyal, sir, to kindly deliver his talk and enlighten his experience. But before that, I would like to request our uh, associate, uh, associate uh, nodal officer of NAHE project to say a few words to our speaker, sir. Uh, most respected uh, speaker of uh, today's evening, uh, Professor uh, V.P. Unyal. Sir, we Sir, welcome you for our four days uh, webinar. webinar. This is our fourth, fourth webinar, webinar. Uh, under the project Institutional, Institutional Development Plan, Plan on NAHE, National Agriculture Higher Education Program. Program. So, so this, this is the first, first webinar, webinar for exclusively for forestry students. And uh, we are glad to have with us, uh, 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 Sir, for all this uh, program. It is meant for uh, forestry students. And uh, I thank uh, Dr. Shivani Dobal also for choosing um, all these international and national speakers uh, to deliver uh, this lecture to the students. And sir, uh, by your rich experience, our students will be uh, enlightened and get knowledge about bioindicators for monitoring biodiversity and uh, ecosystem health. Um, sir, uh, it's a great opportunity, sir, uh, for our students also. So they will be interacting with you as well as uh, they will be um, uh, asking the questions. Sir, please answer all of them. Thank you very much, sir. And I also welcome all the students to be patient till this end and make use of this. Thank you very much, sir. And thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Start, sir. Uh, Shivari, you are able to see the screen? Is clear? 
Shivani? Sir, unmute your mic, sir. I'm audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. It's muted again, sir. It's muted again, sir. Yes, it's okay. Sir, you okay. can mute. Yeah. Yeah. And screen is clear? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, should I start? Yes. Uh, good afternoon, friends, and uh, thank you very much, organizer, for inviting me for this wonderful seminar on biodiversity. I'm audible to everyone. Is okay, Dr. Raja? Dr. Raja? Yes, sir. Audible, sir. Yes, audible, and, uh, sir. Yeah, my yeah, uh, PPT is okay. Yes, sir. It's clearly okay, visible and you are live on YouTube also. People are watching on YouTube also. It's live on that. So you can yeah, continue. Okay. It's just uh, disturbing me that uh, you just make me the co-host. So I am just getting... Uh... To share the slides, sir. Nothing to worry. We are uh, controlling, sir. Fine, you have to control it. Fine. Yeah, friends, yeah. good afternoon and uh, welcome also. Uh, Today the workshop is on biodiversity and I'm talking about this, how you will monitor the biodiversity. And everywhere, majority of the people, they are talking about the ecosystem health. Simple way, if how you will monitor the health of a human being. To monitor the health of a human being, some indicators is required. You are going to your physician and your physician will monitor your health on the basis of certain indicators like temperature, blood pressure, ECG. But as a biologist, how you will monitor the health of an ecosystem? Suppose you are from village background, you have visited some of the forest area and you are in charge of some uh, protected areas. So how will you monitor it? So today I'm talking here about those indicators. Like physicians indicators to monitor the health of a human being, like temperature, blood pressure, ECG, and other investigations. So we are having, we are also trying to find out similar kind of indicators to health, to monitor the health of biodiversity and ecosystem. So we'll discuss and have you having any queries. So you can email me or I will discuss after my presentation. Even then something is not very clear, you can ask me, just mail me and I will see your comments and rectify the things. I'm able to change it. Yeah. Suppose I it's, it's certainly I'm working in the Wildlife Institute of India, and everybody thinks in the mind that uh, wildlife means tiger, rhino, elephant, and this type of species. You are mainly working, uh, but a small creature in our environment, a small creature is a part of biodiversity. They are the indicators. We are also working as a small like tiger beetle. Tiger butterflies, tiger mart, those small beautiful creatures is also the part of wildlife. Wildlife means not only big mammals and charismatic species, only tiger, rhino, elephant, and beautiful birds, they are the wildlife, but some of those beautiful creatures are neglected and they are playing a very, very important role for our biodiversity and they are the best indicator to monitor the health of the ecosystem. Just visualize this picture. You might have seen it when you are visiting in a forest area, when you have visited your village around. This is ecosystem. Within that farm life, we are having trees, water bodies, within water bodies, we are having fishes and uh, other uh, benthic fauna, dragonflies, if you have water bodies, you will see the dragon very clear. You go in the deep in the forest area, so you will see the earthworms. Just dig the soil, and earthworm is there. Large number of spiders, but our focus is different. If you are a biologist or you are working on plants, most of the times you are, your focus is on plant diversity. You will see only the plant lives. If you are just working on 
working on fungus, your focus will be on fungi. If you are working on gastropods, your focus will be gastropods. You are ontology, your focus is birds. But every component is important for biodiversity. Even then, some of the times, people are not going to touch the spider. But you know that we are having 44,000 species of a spider worldwide. And our country is having more than 1,300 species. But our information about the spider is very, very limited. We are least both about the spider. If a spider is inside your house, you are ready to kill it. Nobody is going to tell the spider. But a spider is the best indicators to monitor the health of an ecosystem. And I already discussed in early, what are the indicators? Like physicians, your doctors having the indicators. You are going to the doctor and doctor is monitoring your health on the basis of such a test. So these are the tests of the environment. Even the earthworms. Without earthworms, the decomposition process in the soil, the fertility of the soils, who's going to enhance it? Earthworms. But our information, our knowledge about the earthworm is very, very limited. You ask anyone, how many earthworm in very your village surround? How many earthworm species in your university campus? Answer is limited. Very few person in the country is working on earthworms. But earthworm is playing very important role. Soil fertility. In the forest area, we are not going to uh, going to respect all any minerals over there. Same in the case of this beautiful insect. It's a dragonflies. Coordinator. If you are going to see this dragonfly very close to the forest area, you will see the water bodies certainly because it's an indicator of water bodies. is lay the eggs in the water and then nip, develops and fly. So it is indicators. So this type of indicators are important to monitor the health of an ecosystem. So we are going on discuss all these issues today. You maybe you are expert of the snakes, you are expert, expert of mammals, you are expert of scorpions, spiders, but every component is important and they all coexist and make our ecosystem health better. And on the basis of their study, their presence, absence, we can monitor the ecosystem. Can't, you can't ignore it. The snakes, very important for nature. Ticks, they are very differently. So every component is having its own role on our ecosystem and they are the indicator, but how we will monitor those indicators, how we will select those indicators, we are going to discuss it today. You know about this Indian biodiversity, our country is richest and having this large number of biodiversity. We are having 1,500 species of butterflies, 2,500 species of fishes, reptiles, 447 birds, 1,300 more species and members for species. So that is a 30% world flora and 7.3% of global fauna exist in our country is just in the biodiversity. But our focus, our information is very, very limited. I'm not talking about it, nobody knows it. Majority of the biologists, majority of the nature lovers and wildlifers, they are working across the country and documenting the fantastic information of the biodiversity of the country. Our country supports 70% of the tigers, 60% of Asian elephant population, 80% of these horn, one horn rhino population in the world. Subcontinent habits, wild buffaloes, swamp deer, aesthetic lion, exceptionally mountain and woolies, dives these 19 species. So, this, this is the beauty and richest of our country. Our country has been divided into biogeographical zones by formations. You are having 10 biogeographical zones. Those zones is not with the state boundaries. Beyond that, and we are working the landscape level approach in the Himalayas. This is a Trans Himalaya. So, this exists in the dark areas. This is the western central Himalayas. Then there's a Ganges, western Ghat, eastern Ghats, north East India. So we are having 10 biogeographical zones and on the basis of those zones we are having the document of the biodiversity. So you know it, these pictures from your school days. Everybody knows it, food, tropical levels of food. Within this tropical level of food consumption, insects are playing very, very important role. Majority of the amphibians, they are in, feeding on insects. Some of the insectivorous birds, even the spiders and other species also. So insect is playing very important connecting link for our tropical level of food chain. In the diversity of insects, 
which are having the, you can see the species diversity, that's just the presentation by the insect using the fungi, protozoans, higher animals, algae, bacteria, viruses, insect is big, the highest source. So you know the subject is called an entomology and entomologist, they're doing research working on ecology, behavior, anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, genetics, even the small fly, this Drosophila, large number of experiments of genetics on Drosophila. So the insect, the small fly, Drosophila is very, very important in playing the systematic life of it. The diversity of beetles within insect, we're having different orders. I will discuss about those orders and their beauty also. And within that, we are having large number of beetles. Yes. And within beetles, this has been traits. You know that wildlife has been trait. The tiger has been trait for this skin and bone, rhino for this horn, elephant for the tusk, but large number of beetles and butterfly has been trait. So this is cause of decline in the population of beautiful beetles of country. You can see it, they all very natural colors and that outer part is called elytra. So the, some of the beetles, the elytra is so bright shining so they give a good luscious out of it. And what, why have we trade? People are collecting those beetles and now is the richest area for insect diversity, for the beautiful beetles. People are collecting these beetles and making artificial jewelry out of the lighter part. So that's how they uh, collected in different species, different varieties of beetles is fantastic. But the insect, you know, it's there. Total species of insects from the world exceed one and a half million, representing 90% of the animal kingdom. You all are biology students, you know the animal kingdom. Within that animal kingdom, 90% representation of insect. And our information, the knowledge about 90% is very, very limited. Rest of the 10%, we are amphibians, mammals, reptiles, birds, and other species, other uh, family species. So 10% we are having information, but majority 90% is very, very limited information. They are the major component of world biodiversity in is occurring in extreme climatic conditions. If you want to do this study, you want to see the tiger, you have to go tiger landscape. You want to do this study on rhino, you have to go rhino area, Kajiranga and other areas. You want to see the snow leopard, go in Himalayas. But if you want to do the study of insect, they are everywhere. They exist. Extreme, extreme climatic condition also. They are having the important functional role like pollinators. I will touch the issue of pollinators, how the insect is important and economically useful for human beings. Insects has been reported from the Himalayan, Himalayas, even Mount Everest region, Antarctic region, deserts, and some of the insect is larger than the mammals. So here, yeah, insects are everywhere because they are representing 90% of the animal kingdom and our information about the insect diversity is very, very limited. You know about it, how insect look like and what is the body division. The, if you can see the diversity of insect, how many insect exist in the world? It's so very difficult. It's representing mainly 1.7 to 1.8 million of this kind of species, class insect are distributed in taxon arthropoda, you know it about it. And 53 of the named species are insect. They're having 30 different orders. I will tell you about how orders and how many orders. Beneficial for insects are both economically and environmental. I already discussed it and I will going to highlight again here. They are the best indicators, litmus test of our environmental change. Early in the morning, you are coming to your department, your office and your college, Bright sunlight, you are able to see beautiful butterflies. Suddenly rain, monsoon, the storm, you are unable to see it. They are the litmus test of environmental changes. They are representative symbols of an ecosystem. Some of things I discuss about it here, 90% representation and belong to the vast group of arthropoda as an old, the dinosaur roamed in earth. Thus they are living on the earth several millions years before. Insects are the dominant and Animals on the earth also occur from frozen Antarctica to the scorching sun of the tropical levels. But how many species? Who has done this study of this insect in India? The first is documentation by Lefroy in 1909, British year. 
he documented roughly 25,000 odd species. Subsequently, large number of scientists work and documented the species diversity here. Even then, I just want to highlight here in 1989, the Professor Rudwa. He is the man of Indian termite. Nobody is going to touch the termite. If termite will attack in your house, certainly it will damage your article and you will try to remove it. You will try to kill it quickly. But they are the very, very important indicator of our ecosystem. I will discuss about it here. And Professor Runwan, he worked on termites first in Dehradun for a certain institute. He is the father of Indian termites and done the very important information about termites. So yeah, I'm just going to the, discuss about the endemicity of Indian insects. We had, you know about this Protection Act. We are having last list of animals in Protection Act. They are totally banned and there's a uh, considered under the schedule and schedules category of animals. If the animals is in very limited number and you can do any disturbance with the habitat can disappear anytime like tiger, like rhino, elephant, snow leopard. Those are in schedule one category because their number is very, very limited. Habitat is sinking and if do any disturbance with the habitat, they will I think, disappear. So we are having the butterflies. 128 butterflies in Schedule 1. One species of dragonflies, Schedule 2, 19 species of beetles and 304 species of butterflies. But why the beetles and the butterflies and Schedule? Why people are collecting it? I already discussed. In the case of beetles, they are collecting it for this elytra and elytra they are making artificial jewelry. But in the case of butterfly, for decoration purpose, for textile industries, they are getting it here. So these are the one of the methods people are collecting those butterflies and making this uh, decoration articles, decoration materials. So the beautiful butterfly has been treated for this purpose. Beetle trait here. The second thing very important is the insect are very essential within ecosystem. If you are going in the forest area, you see the leaf litter. If the leaf litter is not going to decompose the enhancement of the fertility of the soil, things are very difficult. But who is doing it? Insect. Without help of the insect, your kitchen garden and your waste for kitchen waste, who is going to, they are not going to decompose it. They are on the insect is playing important role for the decomposition process. Plant progressions, definitely pollinations. Without help of insect, pollination cycle is not going to complete. If there's no any pollinations, for survival will be difficult. I'm going to discuss pollinators later. Then again, seed dispersal. In natural way, insect is playing a very important role for the seed dispersal. Maintenance of the plant community composition and structures by phytophagies, including seed feedings, food of many insectivorous particles, including many birds, beetles, and other birds that are feeding on insects. And maintenance of animal community structures through transmissions of animals and predations of parasitism. Okay, yeah. They are the effect on ecosystem. In plant insect interaction that affect nutrient cyclings. Without nutrient cycling process, our natural decomposition process is not going to complete. Even then, that change of carbon storage is an element cycle, effect on plant species composition, effects on pollination and seed dispersal I discussed here. They are the best ecosystem engineers. Direct change of carbon storage elements, cycling, moving nutrients, modification of habitat conditions, so even the effect on soil and fruits. So here, the termite mount. It is a best landscape architect. You might have seen this termite mount in the forest area. Maybe you have village around any area. So you can see this termite mount is roughly two to three meters high. And again, it is the three meter deep. Roughly the height of this termite mount is roughly four, six meter. If the termite mount height is up is two meter, it is two meter deep also. Even then you can understand that four to six meter is completely air conditioned chambers. You just go and cut this mount, this thermite mount from the stump. Just you can, if you can cut it, cut it from here. You can see the whole chamber is finally in perfect air condition. The aeration is very clear. The percolation of the water is very perfect. If any tree is very close to the thermite mount, 
termites is not going to harm it. Go and observe it from the forest area. Even then, in the sixth meter, the percolation is perfect, and the surroundings of this mount is soil is very very fertile. If the termite mount in the forest is helping it, is an indicator, good indicator of health of your ecosystem. Certainly, if termite is attack your house, it will damage your article. But if termites are in the nature, the nature ecosystem, they are very perfect and they are an indicator like your physician's indicator. Your doctor is having the indicator to monitor your body, having temperature, air condition, temperature, blood pressures, ECG. This termite mount is an ECG of the forest. If the termite mount in the forest area, the ECG for the forest is very fine. So we are having about 2,053 species of termites in our country and roughly 2,600 species worldwide and 291 children. You can see here, high the percolation of the waters is perfect. Very close, the tree is very close to the termite mount, very healthy. So the every component in the nature is very, very healthy for our ecosystem. Don't ignore anything from the natures. You might have seen it. Everybody has seen it. Without ants, the decomposition process of the leaf litter is not going to complete it. It's very common in the forest. Everybody has seen it, but you're not going to monitor it. You go in the forest and monitor the leaf litter process. Otherwise, who is going in the forest? How this Newton cycling in the forest is enhancing. We are going in the forest and collecting so many resources from the forest. Our agricultural fields is declining because of pesticide and fertilizers. But our natural process in the forest is very healthy because of these beautiful creatures. If the termites, if the ants is not in the forest area, the health of the forest is not perfect. They are the blood pressures and ECG of your forest. They are the sugar testing of your forest. So the ants is equally important as a good indicator to monitor the forest health. Just wait. Yeah. Wait. Studies of social insects, Hymenoptera, bees, and ants have allowed understanding of the evolution of maintenance of the social behavior, such as altruism. Social biology comes, existence of entomological studies, social insects is important. Several theories, ideas, and ecology have derived from the insect. Earlier, holistic concept in ecology system and which is, came from the freshwater system of insect. Even Charles Darwin, of his theory of evolution by natural selection, deduced this thesis based on his tropical entomological observations. Understand it, how the insect is important, but our knowledge, our interest about the, about entomology is very, very limited. We are going to ignore it. So this is the theory about it. But the seed number of insects means that the impact upon the environment and hence our life is highly significant. They are the major component of microscopic biodiversity. If for this reason, we should understand them better. We have to understand. We have to learn the ecology of insect. Is that ants or that the other any component of entomology? But how many insects is there? Question, how many insects exist in your village surround, in your you know, campus, where you are staying, where your uh, colonies, you go and understand how many insects is there? The best answer is nobody knows exactly. Because the number of kind of species is so great that entomologists can't keep an accurate count except for small groups. We are having information of butterflies of country. We are having some other in information of the country, but we are not having the correct answer how many grasshoppers species in our country. Because the group is very large and expert is very, very limited, but grasshopper is very important. Majority of the birds are feeding on grasshoppers. I will test the issue of grasshopper today that the recent uh, large number of locusts came from Pakistan and spread in Rajasthan, uh, Punjab, and uh, UP, and now they came to the Uttarakhand also. I will, a few of the slides I will discuss. Them. So you understand this the ways. But the global status of insects, the biota 
all countries, including Antarctica, estimates vary, is very, very, and the percentage is yet to be discovered and reported. For your information, you might have know it about your graduation level, phylum arthropoda, but for an understanding of the people, they are not having the biology background. Arthropoda, jointed legs, they are divided into four classes, crustaceans, maripoda, centipedes, insects and arachnids or spiders and crabs. Then insecta is again divided into three subclasses. Insect with wingless insect, wings are usually present, abdomen divide of appendages, exopterygota, end of terygota wing develops. Within three subclasses, they are in 29 to 30 different orders. Orders means group of insects, like odonates, dragonflies, orthoptera, grasshoppers, particular orders, dermaptera, air wings, isoptera, termites, hemiptera, bugs, thysinoptera, thrips, even that one particular group, you don't know about it, thysinoptera. The order, some of the species you can't see with your naked eyes. Go to your kitchen garden and just try to shake some of the flower in your head and observe it minutely, very minute insect is there. That is the order thysinoptera. And without making the permanent slide, you can't identify it, tough job. Currently, only one scientist working on Thysnoptera, just of my knowledge, George Kassar of India, an important group. But our information of this group is very limited. Subsequently, we are having some orders, Coleoptera, you know about it, Diptera, dip, two wings insect, butterflies, Leptoptera, Hymnoptera, bees. So roughly 29 to 30 different orders. So this is the main classification of the insect. Uh, Dr. Raja, is okay? Just I want to ask a participant, is, it, is yes. perfect? Yeah, it's okay, sir. Perfect. Fine. 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 Yeah, yeah. Sometimes maybe due to the connectivity, if any uh, clarity is not there, you can just uh, uh, call me. Fine. So the can device is very interesting, you can see. You might, everybody has seen the dams to your Any tree, whether it's a tree, is a, a, a teak tree, neem tree, any tree, the general life of the tree is more than 200 years in the forest. With 200 years, variety of insects is feeding on the tree. Some go in the forest area, try to remove the bark of the tree. You will see the mining on the trees, a small bark beetle, family is called it. Some of the majority of the insects they are feeding on a leaf of the tree, some is fruits, some are flowers, and variety of the trees is surviving when the tree exists. Sorry, variety of the insects are surviving when the tree exists for 200 years. This is the ecosystem, but the tree is dying. When the tree dies, again, it requires more than 200 years to decompose properly with the help of insects. First group of insects will come, try to remove the bark. Then second group, third group. Within that, large number of birds feed on those caterpillars and larvae of the insect. Amphibians will feed on it. Variety of other animals will feed on it. So this is the ecosystem health. So that's why in ICN guidelines, if anything in the forest area, please do not remove it because it's an ecosystem. If you're going in the forest and you have seen the tree is dying, is dry, leaf, you're going and collecting it, not at all. Dry leaf is ecosystem. Variety of insects and variety of animals are feeding on that. You have seen the videos of ants, how the ants is moving and how the ants is using those leaf litter and decomposition process. So this, they are the indicators of the forest. They are indicators of biodiversity. So this is the teak tree, log of the uh, oak tree, hard barn oak of Ima, Western Himalaya. I'm observing this log continuously for the last 20 years. And every year, in the month of October, I am visiting this location. This location is the Kedarnath Wildlife Sanctuary of Uttarakhand. So, for my photographic evidences, as well as I put some of the traps here, even on the light traps, pitfall traps, and observe which group of insects is feeding on it. And last 20 years, which my observation, the decomposition process is very, very slow. Yeah. 
I think so. He again required more than 20 years to time was observing in the Himalayas, in the Western Himalaya, in Kedarna Wildlife Sanctuary. So we have put a small system and observing the snowfall, rainfall, temperature, humidity, and just correlating with this inside diversity of this. this so this is the observations of indicators of this area. This is a very common phenomenon and you, everybody has seen it. Fresh animal dung is a, you are visiting and you have seen dung over there, whether it's animal dung and livestock dung. Within half an hour, variety of dung beetles come. Dump the uh, dump inside of the soil and enhance the soil fertility. If you have observed these dump piles in the forest area and there's no dung beetle, it means the health of your forest is not good. The ECG of this forest is fluctuating because there's no dung beetles. We require dung beetles. Dung beetles are equally important. Otherwise, who is going to decompose this dung? Only with the help of dung beetles. So how the dung beetles are important, but our informations and our interest of this particular ecological behavior is very, very limited. Majority of the people is visiting and they are observing it is dung, but that's not understanding how the dung and how the dung beetles are important for ecosystem and it's clear? Yeah. Some of the biological diversity on the species of insect, collector of beetles, weevils, springtails, detector of flies and kind of things also. The last number, yeah, the last number, the largest number of species diversity is the beetles. And then we are having the semitra bugs, large group of insect. Where, where is this distribution? Where do you see the insect? Tropical evergreen forest of Eastern Himalayas and hills of Northeastern India, Arunachal Pradesh and other surrounding states is the richest area of insect diversity. Even then, Indian peninsulas, Malaysia, Chinese and Palatic regions. Second rich area is South India, Nilgiri, Namalai, and Western Ghat, and the other rich area is the Himalayas, Jammu and Kashmir, Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh. And they are, why, but what we do the insect study? Why? Why we will go further conducting the study of insect? For monitoring of biodiversity. Developing a species specific management guidelines. If the forest department, if you are the in charge of any division, you are in charge of your various forest, if you are giving the guidelines for the management of the forest, this documentation of insect study is important. The information of the funnel is a little explored. I already discussed about it. Research on invertebrates is a little explored. Very few groups having the complete information, but majority of the groups the information is lacking and expert is very, very limited. University and the Wildlife Protection Act is not very clear. Butterflies has been documented in majority of the protected areas and forest areas of our country. And other group of insects is almost neglected. No status survey has been conducted. But why those are important? Why those indicators are important? Those indicators are our environment. Even in waters, everybody is saying this running water is clear. How the running water is clear? Because for its benthic fauna. The running water is clear because of this small, small creatures in the waters. Same, they give the changes. Soil, I already discussed about it, how the soil is going to fertile with the help of insect. And ultimately, this is helping our ecosystem and that ecosystem is useful for our society, for managers, for community, industries and government. They make planning out of it. So those indicators which we are talking about insect as a good for our society. And you can say it's biological indicators, similar. You can say the bio indicators, are indicators. But what they will use it, where they're going to use it. They are giving our responses. You suppose you have you have visited your forest area very close to your village and your town regularly. And you are observing it, some particular species of butterfly, you are observing since the last couple of years. But in the same past, you observe the butterfly has not been seen over there. The butterfly is not existing over there. It means something is wrong with the ecology of that area. 
trust information is giving you response short terms and long terms indications they will giving you sense the warning if the presence and absence of any species in any area give you the warning of climate change ecological risk assessment you can on the basis of their information you can see it everybody is talking about climate change but my friends how will monitor the climate change we need some parameters to monitor this climate change we need some data set if you are having the data set of any species i am not talking about only for insect maybe you have observed some bird species some animal in your village around in forest area you are visiting from your school days and nowadays you are just observing it the population is declining it means something is wrong with the ecology ecosystem habitat of that area and this type of observation is giving you warning of climate change warning of ecological change warning of some of the parameters if you observe some fruiting plant in your kitchen garden maybe animal and you are there seen that they are only flowering at the plant there's no fruit it means it means the population the pollination cycle is not going to complete it so this is the risky and this type of observations give you warning sensitivity of warning. so you can say it's bio indicators you can say this environmental indicators and you can say it is ecological indicators ultimately they are the same but i just given one example here this particular plant is artica diacop himalayas if you go in himalayas and you can see this plant you will see in this plant having the particular uh, red admiral and painted lady butterfly larvae and caterpillars on this plant if the plant is the plant is they vegetable and kind of things also but they are having the clear uh, very good host plant relation with this way so this type of observation is very very important for giving you and monitoring of climate change for the communities also and their ecological health is just for the functional and structural food chain level of things ultimately those whole characteristics of functional and ecological health can on the basis of that you can monitor the health and they can say so biomarkers by indicators and ecological suspect but important aspect is here how you will select those indicators i discuss about the ants is good termite is good beetles is good and bees is good but how will monitor it how you will select what is the criteria for selection of those indicators the indicators and their potential use is different if you are in northeast area and you are university campus the indicator for that area is different and the person is working in south india kalakar mundan thoi tiger reserve it is very different and the person working in the uttarakhand and working in the valley of flowers national park the indicators is different so the the selection of those indicators is like ticklish but it requires your long observations in the fields and this characteristics taxonomically well studied groups their habitat occurrence is specialized species within narrow habitat common and easy find to terrestrial ecosystem how you will monitor those indicators here i will tell those you way those indicators you can select on the basis of evidence if you have selected any species as a indicators for monitoring of ecosystem the evidence would be high a species richness their occurrence an important functional role in ecosystem if you are selecting any indicators what is the role of that species for ecosystem health on the like indicators maybe it can be good beautiful birds it can be orchid species it can be any spiders it can be termite it can be any mammal species i am not talking here about since i am working on entomology so i am just highlighting the issues of insect as indicator but not only the insects are the indicator for biodiversity monitoring other species can be but selection and criteria is different on the basis of its abundance richness occurrence and its ultimate role of ecosystem health this is the criteria 
Some of the scientists in the field of entomologists I'm talking here about, this work suggested that in 1906, that bees and dipterans, hypnoptera and dipterans are the good indicators. Some scientists, Murphy and Wilcox, suggested that butterflies is a good indicator. Certainly, butterflies are a litmus test of environmental change. If continuous rain for a few days, few hours, and few months, you can't see the butterflies. But bright sunlight early in the morning, you can see the butterflies. They are the litmus of climate change, litmus test of ecological change. The uh, Sotons and Collins suggested that butterflies and dragonflies, certainly, I already discussed about. If you're going to the forest area and you're able to see the dragonfly, you will see the water bodies. In Pearson and Kasola, they said that tiger beetle is a good indicator, identifying area of biodiversity. And they have done a very fantastic study on tiger beetles. And I will just discuss about the tiger beetle over here. And tiger beetles having 2,041 species documented from Indian worldwide. And 180 species to the endemic of the Indians. There are different species of tiger beetles. This is a tiger beetle. But tiger beetles, uh, the elytra is very metallic shining. People are collecting it, making artificial jewelry, and suggested as a good indicator of biodiversity monitoring. And I already discussed Pearson and Kasula, they work on tiger beetles. Subsequently, I conducted a study of tiger beetles in Western Himalaya. I started from Himachal Pradesh, Pongdan, to the Razaji, and try to find out what is the ecological change and what is the uh, connectivity of the tiger beetles with other species. In the case of uh, Pearson and Kasola, they surveyed the entire world of tiger beetles. And after their study, completing of their study, they put this grading system for all continent of the world. And one grid was 200 kilometers. The how many number of species in one grid they, are, they documented, and they correlated the species of and birds and give the fantastic results. You can read the paper Pearson and Kasola Tiger Beetles, this correlations and indicators of biodiversity. Subsequently, I work in I am very contact with Pearson and Kasola and developed the studies in Himachal. But here, why they were why the species known as Tiger Beetle? You just see this video. And you'll understand. So, It's huge insects, no? It's only a lot of insects. Yeah, Dr. Raja? Sir? Yeah, Sir. video was video was clear. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Your, your, your sound was clear, the video? Sir, sound is not sir. Sound is not coming? No, no, sir. Video is not sir. It's okay, sir, otherwise. No, I will repeat it. Sound is important. Okay, sir. Hmm? Sir, video player कौन सा चला रहे हैं सर? अभी ठीक है? Okay? नहीं सर, नहीं सर, नहीं आया सर. Sir, video is not. Sound is okay. Audio नहीं है सर इसमें उन्हें सर audio नहीं है. Audio, audio नहीं है? नहीं 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 सर. Sir, video player कौन सा है सर?
सर ऑडियो ऑडियो नहीं है नहीं सर ऑडियो नहीं आ रहा है सर ऑडियो नहीं आ रहा है अभी आ रहा है सर आ रहा है यस सर यस सर थोड़ा वॉल्यूम बढ़ा दीजिए ठीक है ठीक है आल्सो एक्सलेंट बायो इंडिकेटर्स फॉर लॉन्ग टर्म मॉनिटरिंग ऑफ फॉरेस्ट इको सिस्टम इन वेराइटी ऑफ लैंडस्केप ठीक है ऑडियो ओके ओके ना यस सर वी कुड फाइन फाइन सो दैट इज द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट स्पीशीज एंड द टाइगर बीच इज इज अटल इन द नेम ऑफ दिस बीच टाइगर बीच इज अरिशियस प्रिडेटर्स एंड इज फीड ऑन अदर ग्रुप ऑफ इंसेक्ट सो दिस इज अन ऑफ द इंडिकेटर्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड रिसेंटली वी हैव पब्लिश द बुक ऑन टाइगर बीच ऑफ अवर कंट्री वी हैविंग को एंड अदर साइंटिस्ट फ्रॉम अदर पार्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड Uh, any person is interested to read this book you can uh, purchase the book through amazon and you will get the idea of tiger beetle species of the country the ecology their behavior and as indicators is a fantastic information has been provided in this book so here is the question is again so how you will monitor those indicators so we have selected the tiger beetle as a good indicators but maybe that you can tiger beetle the species the diversity is not available in every ways so we have done a small you can do this exercise also you can develop this type of projects for your dissertations what we have done we have just small yeah forms as you have provided to the forest department also if you are visiting any forest area any ecosystem areas any national parks you put some of this as insect you can you we use some other spiders butterflies and Ants, dragonflies, grasshoppers. This type of figures, and we have we have handed over this information to the forest guard. When the forest personnel is going to visit this particular area, he can monitor. He can write here which date he is visiting, the latitude, longitude, everybody having the GPS temperatures and this raining and kind of all uh, parameters. But he can monitor here if he has observed the bird. Video. Yeah. Okay. So if he can uh, monitor the butterfly, he can state here which color of butterflies. On the basis of colors, at least we can identify the families. How many numbers of butterflies seen? How many number of grasshopper ants he has seen? We can identify. He can collect and take the pictures on that way. If he is having the regular information, having this month he has visited in particular area and documented this species diversity. Next month, or after two months gap, he again visited the area and documented it. If you are having the data set of one years, two years, five years, on the basis of this particular information, anyone can compile it and represent those sites and observe it. If he have observed five years back in one particular point one, he observed red red colors of ants. He observed and available, and currently not. you can use the pictures of the gentleman who observed 10 years ago on the basis of his presence and absence you can say this is a change is going on certain on the basis of this exercise you can select those indicators secondly i already discussed the ants they are ecosystem engineers key on the species key stone species transforming environmental to the other species nutrient cycles i already highlighted without ants our nuclear this nutrients processing is not going to complete high biomass and activity levels predators of pest of insect and they are the perfect indicators we have done some of the exercise with our students and master students in dehradun also and documented how number of species of ants is exists over there only few scientists in our country are working on ants but in northeast area your campus your village surrounds there are huge number of ants you can go and monitor those ants they are very very important for ecosystem health you can see it how ants exist to work yes 
So that science is important, yes. I already discussed and you try to be small, you can develop your small projects on the diversity of ants of your area. The students who work in entomology and the students as the subjects in botany students, they can use this type of species and correlate how many number of species ants and what is their mechanism of decomposition process is going on. They are the best ecosystem engineers. Second important aspect is pollination. You know what the definition of the pollinators. How what is the pollinations? You know what it. The partners clearly have benefit from each mutualism associations. The pollinators. They are the keystone species. Provides vital for maintenance of vital plants, communities, and agricultural productivities. The pollination mostly bees is necessary for production of 84 percent of all crops, and 75 percent of crops that are used directly as human food worldwide. You can understand what food production is depend on the pollination cycle and they are 75 percent. They are good for the trees and trees are good for the bees. You can read it. Einstein, he was right. He observed that honeybees collapsed threatens global food security. If the bees disappear off the surface of the globe, then man would only have four years of plants, no more animals, no more plants. You can't survive without pollination cycle and pollination cycle is not going to complete without help of pollinators. But the information of pollinators is limited. You can ask you, I can ask you, how many pollinators in your village around? How many pollination in your university campus? In Arunachal, in the horticulture university? You ask and just try to observe it. How many pollinators is going, coming in pollination in your fruiting plants? I think so the information is limited. But those pollinators are very, very important. They simply is common understanding that pollinators will come and pollinate all type of common fruiting plants. Not They are very selective feeders. The group of pollinators is different for pollination for different type of cropping system. They prefer on the basis of flower colors, fragrance of the flowers. Every flower is having different fragrances. You can smell the flowers and identify. You just close your eyes and just feel the fragrance of the flowers. You can identify on the basis of fragrance. It is not any pollinators will come and pollinate all the cropping system. Every flower is having pollen, sugar in the nectars amino acids, toxins, nutrition for, nutritive for the value of the pollen. On the basis of those parameters, the pollinators select for pollination of your crop. Colors, preference of the colors. Every flower seven different color combinations. That is also important for pollinators. Thus, pollinators come in the order, Hanoptera, mainly bees. And uh, Larvae feed on plants, ants, rats, bees, make colonies, parasites and predators, vapiers, and having over well length 20,000 species of hymenopterans, 23rd among the five major order of the in insect. You know about the orders I already defined, and 20,000 species of bees here. Some of the important families of the bees I'm going to highlight here. And a group of pollinators, certainly bees is a primary pollinators. Some of the phytophagus, parasites. The second group is the butterflies and moths. And some, some of the beetles, they pollinate. Some birds also pollinate. Bats also pollinate. But they are not the primary pollinators. The primary pollinators are only Hymenoptera bees. You can see how this small, one particular pollinators, pollinator and clapping system. You can see only one pollinator is helping to pollinate only one flower system. No other pollinators will feed on it. So this is the cycling of pollinators. But those pollinators are in serious threat. The study is going on. Large number of scientists is observing it. The pollinators are declining it. Our focus is 
not declining of politics. Our focus is different. The focus is common man is different. The focus of politician, bureaucrats, they are different. They are not understanding how the politics is important. But some studies conducted it here that mobile towers. Everybody is having mobile phones. If somebody is having two. We are getting the signals. You know, we are getting the signals on the basis of electromagnetic radiations. And those electromagnetic radiations are disrupting the behavior of bees. You know about it? Bees is going out from the beehives roughly 8 to 10 kilometers and more than that for collection of pollen. When the worker bees is coming back, those electromagnetic radiations are disrupting their navigation behaviors. These are best navigators. When they are going out from the beehives for 10 kilometers coming back, the same hype because of pheromones and navigation behavior. So those radiation of mobile towers, those electromagnetic radiations is disrupting their behavior and this is the cause of decline of bees. One of the cause of decline of bees. You know about it, I don't want to highlight here, you know how the bees is important, but bees, honey bees and pollination is important. You. You can do a lot of presentation, PowerPoint and this and that, but you can't get honey without honeybees. If you want honey, you need honeybees. And honeybees is there, then pollination cycle is going to be completed. And how the honeybees are surviving? There are the pollinators, pollen from the fruiting plants. So how the bees is important, but our information, our knowledge about the bees is very, very limited. You go and ask any biologist in your area, how many bees exist in your area? I think she is unable to answer. So the bees is important. And this is a litmus test of environmental change. The presence of bees is a parameters as indicators. ECG of the forest of area when you, any person is walking, any ecosystem area, any protected area, this is the indicators. This type of indicators known as a bio indicators large number of articles by the people's honeybees under attack on all trends, declining it. You can just understand this video, which I already discussed about this ecology and pollinators, how the flowers are important, how the color of the flower is important, how the shape of the flower is important, how the amino acid pollen, quantity of the pollen, even the wind velocity is important for pollination. This is the gist of the pollination ecology in this video. Bees help pollinate flowers as they fly from plant to plant in search of nectar, the sweet liquid that flowers secrete. Flowers attract bees by their shapes, colors, and fragrances, and even by their movements. As the bee attracted to this flower tries to get to the nectar, it collects pollen on its legs and back. The bee will leave the pollen on the stigma of the next flower it visits. So this is the polish and this is the polish ecology. Relationship between pollinators and the flowers, fruiting plants. So how the pollinator is important for our survival. If there's no bees, no pollination, no man. Difficult to survive. But what is happening in the, some of the states like Uttarakhand, Himachal and Jammu and Kashmir? There are some stories and so we have done some study over there. So in the winter season, the people are using this pruning, tearing of the apple trees, fruiting trees, and they're putting two meter tree trunk pesticide, the paste of this pesticide, to protect their tree from insect. Because if insect will attack their apple plants, it, they can damage it, they will not get a good cost of the apple. If any insect will sit here, it will die immediately. It may be a butterfly, it may be bees, it may be other pollinators. But they're protecting their plant. When the fruit plant is ready, the fruiting is ready again, they are doing the pesticide. They are killing the pollinators. What happens in last few years in some of the part of Himalayas? The fruiting plant, the apple tree was full of flowers. The story I already discussed, you, know, you can observe in the kitchen garden, maybe you observe it. The apple tree was full of flowering, but there was no fruiting because they kill all the pollinators. Things came in the knowledge of the government and 
government scientists conducted the study because there was no pollinators. Now, if you're going to Himalayas, apple states, every apple tree, one bottle, plastic bottle, maza and bisleti bottle hanging over there. They're putting pheromones to attract bees to pollinate the crop. Every tree is having one and two bottles and within this bottle is the pheromones for the attraction of the bees. So artificial pollination cycle is going complete because they kill the natural pollinators. So this is the use of pheromones to retrieve the pollinators because they kill the pollinators. So this is the sad story for the decline of pollinators. In the US, we are using in our country. Can, please can I have, thank you. Yeah, we are, you, we are celebrating wildlife week in our country to sensitize common men, school boys and other biologists for conservation of wildlife. In US, they're using, celebrating national pollinator weeks last week of June every year to sensitize for use of native plants, hanging bird feeders, built a beehives, plant butterfly garden for the conservation of pollinators. It is essential life on our planet. You know about it, how the insects change their color, how the leaf is important. Is a, a dry leaf butterfly, is a not, not a leaf, it's not a dry leaf, is a butterfly is here. They change their color and for the defense mechanisms, the mimicry changing of colors, you know what it. And the important part, you know, the behavior of ecology is required, communications fast, bioluminescence, sense organs, very, very, very important here. And the important aspect of bioluminescence, I am going to touch the bioluminescence here again. Insects, they migrate, they dipole, they have a net. Majority of the insect, butterflies, they migrate from one country to other countries. Dipoles, they hibernate with the, when the atmosphere, the ecology, the habitat is not perfect, they hibernate. Pests, the vectors, pollinations, human food, medicine, service, and cultural values having that way. You know, majority of insects is certainly they are very injurious for our cultivated plants. They are serious pest of majority of the areas. But we are commercial products also. Honey and honey wax. Then silk is important. You can't get silk without silk moth. Our country is, the silk is very rich. In different area, Kashmir silk, North is silk, Assam silk, and uh, Karnataka, that is a Masur silk. They're having varieties of silk with the help of silk moth, how the silk moth is important. And about this butterflies, our country is having 1,500 odd species, some of the the criteria of butterfly in different areas and uh, northwest Himalaya is 325, schedule 1, 128, schedule 2, and ICN guidelines here. Some of the uh, important area of butterflies where I work in Gangoti National Park of Western Himalaya. Some of the important aspect I will tell you how the insect is important here. And what is the correlation between insect, pheasants, and this plant? This plant is known as the Texas Wallichiana. It's a conical plant of Himalayas, Western Himalaya. And it grows roughly 3,000 meter altitude. The germination process is very slow. And this berries, this fruits, very fleshy fruits, very sweet. And this plant is important for caring of cancer. People is collecting it the leaf and the bark, and it's going to the production of taxol. Even then one gram taxol is five to six lakh rupees kg for caring of taxol. And they grow it. What is happening in this particular area? When this particular habitat of Texas Bacata, two fijant species, they survive. This is the best habitat of this is both species. This is the monal fijant. This is the state bird of Uttarakhand. And this is the Western Tagapan. This is the state bird of Himachal Pradesh. Both the fijans, the habitat of the area where Texas plant exists. But the natural regeneration of this Texas is very slow. Both the fijans, 
they mainly feed on leaf litters they feed on insects they feed on caterpillar larvae or varieties of ant and other species because majority of the species in the forest area in conifer and oak forest the decomposition process is very fast with the help of varieties of insect and both the insect both the pheasants they are digging the uh digging the soil and feeding on insect subsequently they are just uh, eating the seed the fruit of this plant and when the seed is coming out from the gut of those both the pheasants the germination process is very fast otherwise the natural germination is very very slow so these are the story within insect pheasants and texas vacata both the, they are in schedule one both the pheasants as well as the tree species texas vacata and high, high value medicinal plant of himalayas certainly caring of cancer this is the beautiful birds of among the whole bird community western tragopan is exist in great himalayan national park of himachal pradesh and the park has been created for the conservation of this beautiful bird currently the bird exists only in in uh, pakistan in nilam valley and this uh, breeding center in himachal pradesh in bushahar rampur bushahar of simla district they are having about more than 50 individuals they are breeding over there and the plan is they will after the breeding they will release in the nature but it is a local belief of that area in kulu valley people called it juju rana juju means bird rana means king king of the birds and the story behind this beautiful bird is when god created all bird species god requested every bird to donate one feathers by the combination of all feathers or the bird species god created this beautiful bird is western tagapan and the story of tagapan you can see this is a natural pictures of that area you can see the leaf litter and then are mainly feeding on insect of the area so the how the insect is important and as well as insect group and this bird species can become the good indicator of biodiversity good indicator of ecosystem health of that particular area where the bird exists so there is to be So I have done some surveys in Nanda Devi Biosphere Reserves, Nanda Devi National Park of Western Himalaya, and found that some of the very important species of butterfly is a coma butterfly. It exists only above three thousand meter altitude. The ventral side of dorsal side of this is having coma-like structures and called as a coma. This is yellow swallow butterfly, is a beautiful and common butterfly of the area. This is the area of Great Himalayan National Park, um, Pinch Valley National Parks area. Uh, I have done some insect study over here. some butterflies some of these having five species of polus or catri some species butterflies is called snow polo very transparent butterfly you can't able to see it the area is full of the snow when the snow melts the area is full of flowers you can go and do your study also some of the very important aspects in karakoram by the treaty there is a recent dispute of china and india in this karakoram valley that area is karakoram by the treaty i visited the area and i am fortunate to visit up to the siachen base camp so the karakoram area which i observed so particular sorry i observed this particular plant is a magnosis aculeata queen of himalayan flowers in this magnosis magnosis aculeata very strong your species of pollinators feed on it the fragrance is very high even from the distance of 1 and 2 meters away from this plant you can feel the fragrance of this plant so this plant is also very in general category but the plant is very very important for this uh, maintaining the habitat of a particular group of pollinators some of this is the area habitat of karakoram island century and that valley exists is a two hump rhino this rhino so two hump camel we can uh, mainly we are having one hemp camels this two hemp camels in this karakoram valley situation this is the area of trans himalayan region of hemis national park of ladakh this is the lay city and this is the hemis national park hemis national park is the largest national park of our country uh, and uh, this uh, just habitat of the snow leopard so we observe this particular uh, yellow clouded butterfly in this valley area this is the heavens national park and this is a small village 
land holding in Roomba on the base of this famous national park and this butterfly exists over there. If the villagers will do the change of fertilizers and pesticides for agriculture system, the butterfly will uh, die any time. Habitat will decline only as some of the Apollo butterflies of the species. So they are the real butterflies of Himalayas, mainly Apollos, Parnassus species, comma, birdwing butterflies, northeast is richest in birdwings, and yellow yellow tail. Some of the things how the people are collecting this uh, butterfly, I just observe it, the trade in going on. People are collecting those butterflies and putting in this triangle and selling in the market also. This is one of the very serious potential threat in the case of Yeah, potential threats of this pollinators. This is the high value medicinal plant of Western Himalaya, is known Dactyla as a heterosidia, is an orchid species. And this flowers, this plant exists above 2000 meter altitude. And this particular Apollo butterfly, they feed on this plant, this pink flowers. The pollination cycle is going to complete with the help of the plant and this butterfly. The butterfly is in Sidul 1 structures, a rare butterfly of Western Himalaya. But since the plant is having very high medicinal value, orchid species, locally known as hat panja, means the rhizome is like a palm of your hand. The gentleman is a local healer. He's uh, going to the forest area, uprooting the plant. He is least bothered about the ecological balance. He least bothers about indicators. Even let's see, this area is very potential. You can see a large number of plants is here. This is area. But he is uh, this connecting links is going to kill it. So this type of collection is also serious threat in the life of this it's very beautiful creatures and some of the group of pollinators. They say that people are using this mementos for the butterfly processes. So this is a I already discussed this a key key things. Insect is here. It's a beautiful butterfly of our country, Keshari in butterfly area. The best habitat is Arunachal Pradesh, and this is the Bhutan glory butterfly. Some of these panels you can see here. Within these panels, some is the artificial butterfly, some is natural. Very difficult to identify. Expert can identify. This is market for the same. Even then, this panels you can see here. This is the ladies' hair clips, will plastic coated. Within that plastic coated clips, some is the natural butterfly feathers, some is the artificial, and you can see this butterfly jewel. Ladies' earrings. So this is the natural feathers of the butterflies. So this is a trade of going on butterfly feathers. This is the jewelry. You can see it. You can already know it about it. How this collection beetles and boxes there. He is textile. I already discussed about textile industries. Large number of people from textile industries they collected the butterflies from the forest because every butterfly is having different color combinations and they're getting idea out of it. So now people are having very fantastic and high quality camera. They are taking the photographs, but in earlier days, they are not having very sophisticated career. The cameras and they are going in the forest and collected those butterflies also. And some of the trade is going on, international trade in the market. People is going and sailing in the market. Some of the websites of the insect collector websites. Even some of the potential threats that uh, livestock grazing, the numerous of Ladakh, they having sheep and goat, they are just clearing the ground covers, whole grass as on flowers. When they graze it, they kill all the pollinators habitat. They all they destroy the flowering plants. So this is one of the serious threat of pollinators of high values. So we have developed some of the posters and pamphlets for this distribution for the first department for this school kids, the number of butterfly species. Even in cultural values, how you will know how the common people can understand the values of butterflies. This is the cultures. Butterflies in Kenya, in China, that is uh, pollinators. But our country is having this stamps on butterfly. This is one of the means of communication. This is a mean of communication. So every country, they have made this particular species of moths and butterflies. That is the rare species of that particular area they develop this stamp. So this is the way of communicating the importance of those species for the common man. Subsequently, the beetles, 
large group of beetles, roughly 3,000, 3,000 species worldwide, or countries having thousands, uh, 114 species, uh, families, and 39 one and four families. Other important aspect I'm going to highlight is here is uh, bioluminescence. You just recollect your childhood and fireflies. You just remember your visit of your village surrounds during monsoon, you might have seen fireflies. In entomological, in insect, only three groups, they are producing the light. Lampharidae, fireflies, sorry. Lampharidae, fireflies, Phenogudidae, this larvae, caterpillars, uh, this larvae is uh, producing light. And in click with the electricity, they also produce the light. This is a pronotum, is a lighter. The both the side of the pronotum, the big, large bulbs, they produce so much of light, you can read the newspaper very easily. In US, people say it's collecting, the kids is collecting, there's a click beetles. Click beetles means they know, make the sound, click, click, click sound, and they are in the ventral side. They are having a spine and uh, own projection, and when the beetles move, they fit the projection, fit in this projection, and they make click, click, click sound. They jump two, three feet high from the ground covers. So that's why this name of this beetle is a click beetle. And people is collecting this click beetle, putting in the light lens, and the beetle is moving up and down. The light is up and down going on. People are enjoying the dinner. So the importance of this beetle is that click beetle, even then this firefly, they are declining very fast. Currently, the status is not known. Majority of a bureaucrats, politician, common men, they are least bothered about this decline of fireflies in the nature. But they are very good indicators. You might have seen it. You can go and just recollect your childhood days and fireflies when you visited your forest and you visited your native place. Now, this is a very fast decline. But what is the cause of decline? They are disappearing. These fireflies are disappearing. Maybe beginning for the environmental change. Fireflies, certainly, luciferin phrase is used for all kinds of medical research. Luciferase are used for the markers for the detect the blood clot. Lucifer is a compound, but they are reacting with the oxygen and blinking the light. They are playing the propagations, progressions of the, some disease like cancer and di diabetes. Maybe people say collecting it and use our luciferase of this research purpose, maybe our native species at risk for the population decline. There are reasons why the species in decline, but in recently some of the observation, people are observing it, that we have changed our lighting system. Earlier we were having the yellowish bulb light, now is a uh, LED lights, very fast and very bright lights everywhere. Those lights is disrupting their mating behaviors. This is observation by the scientists, but is not proved so far, but it is clear that fire flies are declining from our natures very, very fast. We can do the study and observation of fire flies, and they can become the good indicators of biodiversity monitoring. Certainly, I will discuss ecological diversity distribution patterns of beetles, coleoptera, vital for ecological monitoring of biodiversity. This species I already discussed you. You know about this species. Jagogramma by Colorita. You can identify this plant. This is a Parthenium. You can see the Parthenium everywhere. It's this up to the 2000 meters up to the Himalayas. But how the Parthenium came to our country? The Parthenium came in our country from Mexico. This is under the, after the independence, government of US sanctioned some of the amount for agriculture research of our country. They donated some money to do the agriculture research for food, high food productions. But in midway of the research program, they send some of the wheat free of cost and say it distribute in the rural areas. With the help of that distribution patterns and this helping approach of US, the seed came of Parthenium seed came in our country and they spread all over. Subsequently, some of the scientists work on, they are working on host plant. They requested some of the scientists our Indian scientists requested the scientists of the Mexico for some of the live specimen of this beetle. Mexican bean beetle, Jagogram by Colorita, family Chrysomelidae. And this beetle also came from Mexico. Now the beetle also exists. You can see, go in the forest area, 
road side area and observe minutely this congress grass this parthenium plant you will see the beetle is eating, eating this feeding on the flower part so the beetle came or country from mexico as well as the plant also from mexico both ex exotic species is spread all over the country and is a noxious weed non palatables and certainly destroying the soil structure of commonness so the endemic reality and host plant relationship lacking most of the beetles are a pest of different forest types and that is good things i the impact of the precious forest fire tourism in the forest area need to develop long term management strategies for this purpose and this is if you want to do this in sector study there is simple mechanism also different kind of light traps you put the light traps outside your house side of your kitchen garden and forest area your university campus and you can collect those insect and identify it this is the simplest mechanism for collection of insect we are suggesting and recommending the farmers don't use pesticide don't use any fertilizers if any insect is attacking your floating your cropping system your floating trees you just put simple light traps country meats low cost put a light bulb here and one container full of water in night hours in insect will sit here and dip in this container the one the country full of water will die immediately but it so this is the methods of collection of insect don't use pesticide some of the identification books of insects or country butterflies of the world butterflies or in the region identification of in a butterfly by evans tropical insect lives butterflies in the regions volumes of one of british india and some of the important museums of our country like zoological survey of india pusa institute entomology division the school of entomology sangam college agra botanical survey of india naturalists commonwealth london they are important organization who are working on entomological science so this will be, after that i will just tell you about the locust how the locust came in the country the background of locust they generally called as a desert locust oh, yeah. here come the locust yeah is a uh, order orthoptera and family acridity this is the easiest methods how you will monitor it how you will identify those how you will say it is a orthoptera grasshoppers and crickets the prefix is a ortho means straight wings simple referring to the wings the body and jumping hind legs identification methods some of the oviposter at the end and this is the distribution of the locusta generally you can see it how they reach this distribution locust in everything the grassland desert of africa from africa and they reach up to the punjab this time this is the mechanisms so life cycle of this locusta eggs nymph or hopper and adult stage normal condition desert locust act as a solitary insect lay eggs when temperatures and moistures are suitable for this uh, developing process females dig the hole and x pod with approximately with the uh, batch of 100x they put here they just dig the soils and this laying the x over here so this is the mechanism of x generally hatch after two weeks or incubate period but may take longer time depending on the temperatures of the area so how they this uh, this type of this year otherwise the root of this locusta was here to the Oman, but they just only moved with the wind velocity. The Africa, they were planning to reach here up to the Oman area, but the wind velocity was upper regions. Then they reached to Pakistan, and from Pakistan they reached to the Rajasthan, and from Rajasthan to Madhya Pradesh, then Uttar Pradesh, and I think so. I got the information today morning. They are touching to the Uttarakhand borders. Prevention measures, migratory natures, rapid population growth presents major challenges. Insecticide and pesticide are the first uh, modest approach. People are using it. Use of chemicals such as quantities, bio-friendly organic pests is required. This is the mechanism of how um, uh, production, noise productions, and through the north. But it's not a viable. It's not permanent solutions. But using locust as a chicken food, they Pakistan they use it. They collected this locust and use for this chicken feeds for this purpose. and pheromones on the basis of pheromones the station start for the term lower the locusta and the scientists look 
I decoded this chemical language of this way, and this is the locust I use as a good food, and they're selling in the market also. And certainly, it's a great economic loss on our cultivation or cultivating crops of the regions. Government is very serious about it. And even then, earlier in time of Britishers, they are having the locusta division, agriculture division. One branch is the control of locusta. It cycles remains come after every 10 years. So there was a general information of locusta and indicators of biodiversity monitoring of this purpose. I think so. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, you can just quickly discuss with me. Otherwise, you can mail me. I will try to answer. And if any other information is required. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, sir. Uh, am I audible, sir? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much, sir, for this uh, wonderful presentation. And I hope that students have uh, seen so many interesting photographs as well. And I'm very, very thankful to you, sir, that in, in a simple phone call, you agreed for giving yeah. this uh, wonderful lecture yeah. to us, sir. Yeah. And sir, uh, especially it's the case study of 20 years in Kedarnath, sir. It's a very good experience to share with, with my students, sir. And uh, one more thing is that I have received few questions on uh, locust uh, attack, and you also touched that portion in your PPT. So I hope that mm -hmm. student, uh, so much uh, they got the idea about uh, what is this uh, issue. But sir, I would like to put on some questions. So yeah. Yes, sir. So just a minute, sir. Uh, sir, you can disable the screen, sir. Your yes, slide share, you can disable, sir. Okay, just do it. Yes, yes okay. That's okay. So now I can, yes, sir, yes, sir. Sir, the first question, it was asked by uh, Sathi Kala Rakesh, uh, like uh, in India, why the rural farmers haven't know about the parasitoids? and why those are so much expensive and unavailable to the farmers? Uh, mainly, uh, every state, they are having agriculture department, horticulture department. But those departments are not much in functional practices. Only few states I can tell you about in the case of Himachal Pradesh. Himachal Pradesh, they are having only two universities. One in Palampur, agriculture university, and Solan, they are having horticulture universities. And they are having the research centers in each uh, taluka. Every district and within district in taluka, and one, two, three scientists, soil scientists, entomologist, plant scientist, and their team. They are having direct connectivity, connection link with the farmers. And the farmers is getting updated information of their research findings. And that's why the state is very rich in horticultures. But other states, even then, I will tell you in Uttarakhand, we are having the very old university, Panthanagar University. But even then, Panthanagar University is also not having their small, small campus in different districts. So this is the unfortunate part of our country. The farmers is not getting updated information about the field research of any agriculture scientist doing. So that is the main things. And the things is lacking, and that's why farmers is not to, uh, updated. They are not getting any information. Only they are, only the companies like pesticide, fertilizers. Those company people is going and contacting the farmers. To use this type of fertilizers. Use this is the latest uh, pesticide. But a scientist is not visiting. You don't use the fertilizers and pesticide. Go for the organic farm, organic farming. So this is a very unfortunate part. Our in our country, the farmers is very low information in very low variety. Sir, so, uh, one more question from Aditya. Uh, in the natural forest, it is set to protect the biodiversity and insect. And being a part of natural biodiversity, they have a very important role in nature. So he's asking that, uh, is it not uh, protection of these biodiversity and principle of sustainability contradicting each other? Uh, Aditya, certainly as per, the, as per the guidelines of Biodiversity Act. Even then, you can't cut any blade of grass from the nature. Forget about picking up anything from the forest. You can't touch it. Even then, in our, if you are going any protected areas, you require proper permission. 
even since i am working in the wildlife institute of india and i am doing research in forest area i am obtaining the permission from the first department the things is untouched and remain untouched for the biodiversity for the conservation of biodiversity is not a contradictory in the protected area even the forest the biodiversity act you can't touch you can't collect even though we are not able to collect in the insect you take the pictures and if required then take the proper permissions from the forest department and do the pictures so this is the area this is the protected areas our protected your your country is having roughly 700 ps and as per the guidelines of iucn within of your total area of your uh, surface area of your country 50% area should be protected but in our country we are having only less than 5% protected even mm -hmm. we are having 700 protected areas still our protected area is very very less very far yes. from the main guidelines yes. provided by iucn iucn yes yes i agree yes. sir totally agree sir uh sir one more question is uh, yes. asked by ani aman uh, the locust attack recently occurred in india and if mm -hmm. we take control measure to reduce the population will it harm the ecosystem population controlling is a natural phenomenon my dear friend locust are they will survive in nature no doubt about it. but as ontholes birds lavas are saying that is a good food of birds but certainly they are destroying the cropping system and uh, the only they are used in some of the area and i think so rajasthan also is spray of pesticide through helicopter for the control of locusta but is it in nature you can't fight with the nature the natural phenomena even then salt tree salt borer salt borer will repeat every after 10 years after 10 years yes and they destroy the salt trees you know the story of the madhya pradesh and part of uttarakhand they cut so many salt trees because of the attack of salt the salt borer also so this locust will come after 10 years is a natural phenomena people are trying to control it the drumming and this kind is not a viable solution pesticide how many helicopters you will you require for the controlling of pesticide for the killing of those locust is not possible is a natural yes. phenomena and nature having is having their own cycle and on course of survival yes sir sir uh, i'm taking one very interesting question by asked by nidesh uh, yeah. it's a very nice session uh, most needed one uh, can you give a brief account on dark diversity concept to the nature conservation and how can we arrive at the same in case of alien insect species any parallel studies are going on in india and please address I, the question no no i have no idea about it alien species no, i mean yes i have no idea about it So, uh, some girls is asking about the tiger beetles. Uh, What the role of the indicators in the group? Most the of the termites also consume the wood of live trees in the forest. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely termites. Also. But if you are surviving, termites will also need to survive. Hmm. Termites also need the food. We are consuming yes. the food, and that is a plant product. We are our survival on plant. Whether it is vegetable, whether it is rice, whether any material, the whole material is coming from the plant. So why not termite will survive on plant? Yes. Sir. But okay. Yes, uh, the main consumer is basically man, human being. We are most consumers. Even we are not giving anything for the nature. We are destroying our nature. But the termite is giving so many things for the nature. is percolation of the waters aeration of the nature even then in forest area there is termite mound the forest is very rich but termite is more helpful than we people we are destroyer in our house everybody house you see how many wooden furniture is there how the wood is wood is coming from the forest and how many trees we are planting and how many we are observing the survival of the trees every year you can see any government i don't want to criticize the government large number of plantation is going on every year every year is a record genius greens were book book record one day this much of trees they are planted next year whether trees is going whether they, they are maintaining or observing the tree or not uh okay sir so this is uh, a problem a but may even termites bees they are harmful i definitely majority of the insect is harmful they destroy your cropping system but they are having the ecological balance they are maintaining it 
there is to to cause this is a food chain behavior they are giving some thing the nature at least yes sir so one question on tiger beetle asked by nidesh again can you explain the methodology that you have followed for estimating the diversity of tiger beetle at your site and also i would like to know about the life history strategies and peculiar behavioral adaptation in the tiger beetle as well uh, yes, okay. uh, tiger first uh, first uh, first the uh, tiger beetle is a predators and they make the tunnels and long tunnels they lay the eggs over the tunnels and when the the eggs they hatch the okay, larvies they come out on the top and mouth of this tunnel and this collect some other groups of tiger beetles some group of other insects for the mechanisms of this purpose for part of the general observation of tiger beetles you just go sweep net is required with the help of the sweep net you have to collect it and there are any mechanism and methods of different group of insect how to collect it how to monitor it you just visit my website also nialvp.com and request i think so some of the my particular one small book of tiger beetles is you can download it and mac methods and different diversity and its tutorial guide is there you can do it and i already define about this the recent book of tiger beetles the ecology and their behavior and its diversity even then identifications i will monitor it so that things is available over there and uh, yes, this is the article so uh, i would like to take one question on bio indicator sir it's been asked by Sh uh, shati kala rakesh uh, what is the role of a bio indicator in the crop pest management strategies uh, note some examples of insects which have effective control on perennial weeds yeah yeah easy right see the right also for sometimes the insect pest majority of the insect they are having a pest those pests is not playing a very important role as bio indicator because they are harming the crop in system just like i comparative like ants ants is not harming ants is enhancing this ecological ecosystem but some of the pest insect pest they are harming the cropping system so they can't become a very good indicators for monitoring the health of ecosystem okay so those are helping in the nature can become the indicators i will define that on the basis of certain criteria abundance species richness their occurrence and their role for the ecosystem health even ants is playing very important role one particular group uh, beetles is called as the row beetles the stephanelidae family if you yes stephanelidae family you just go the stephanelidae beetles and touch it you feel irritated allergic but when the beetles exist the moisture of that area is very high they maintaining the moisture content of the soil and moisture contents of the habitat of that area they are a good indicators but majority of the insect is a pest they can't become the good indicator because they are not they are not helping our ecosystem but quite obvious yeah. so you can have in any things in your mind you can mail me okay and i will give the answer yes you can contact for that uh, should, should i discuss more questions sir or it's okay sir anyway you can you can write me you can mail me that i will answer it uh, in the chat box sir lots of questions sir participants have posted <laughs> and they liked your presentation very much sir and they were saying that's very they very fortunate that Fine. Yeah, yeah, you can yeah, you can no problem you can mail me some of my students is also attending i was observing in manisha is attending vandana is attending sir, and agni is attending they are all are, they are the big i am having very big team of student large number sir, of students is respect yeah i am very fortunate that i got a chance to meet you sir two three times in the international national seminar sir and with you and with ma'am also i got a chance to go to abroad sir and really it's a very fortunate thing for me sir and you are still in contact i am very very thankful to you sir uh, sir i request all the uh, participants to unmute themselves and we we'll have a one pick together sir so that we can see how many participants have attended for the for our record sir so i request all the participants to please unmute themselves and uh, we'll see in a gallery view we'll take one uh, photo of that so okay, i sure. request all the please unmute please enable your videos 
So thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yes. Very nice lesson, sir. I was okay, nice. Okay, okay. You can go. You can. I'm actually I teach forest pathology for the forest uh -huh. students, BSc forestry yeah. and MSc forestry here in also horticulture and forestry. Mm -hmm. I used to visit every year uh, to the forest and collect rubbish. Uh, so uh, uh, so uh, you are uh, you are so very so very informative, sir. Like, whenever I go. Thank you very much, sir. So okay, wonderful. Sir. Thank you. You can contact me. Yeah. yeah, you can contact me through email. Yeah. And uh, you can visit my website also, download the papers, and uh, in fact, anytime there's no issue. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, let them uh, uh, the uh, uh, take a photo. Uh, uh, Just uh, one, two minutes away. Two minutes away. Just wait for two minutes. <laughs> There are three pages, second page and taking now. Video ko unmute kar diya? Ya unmute. Ha. Hello? Enable the video only. Enable your video only. Enable your video everyone. <laughs> Just wait for a minute, sir. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Okay, for okay. Learning and, uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, see you again. All the best for everyone. Uh, Dharadun, I'll meet you, sir. Fine. Thank you yes, so much yes. for your wonderful presentation. Fine, sir. fine. Have Thank a, you very much. Thank you, sir. Your discussion with the participants. So please hold on. Participant, please stay back. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I need to discuss one thing with the participant that uh, there are 12 to 13 IDs which are not correct because while sending the links, they are showing that these IDs are not valid. There are 12, 13 IDs are not valid. I will post again in the email of my email. 13, 14 IDs are not valid. I think they are not receiving this links or all the 